Today I'm going to show you how to make a rotating 3D product box. And you can also use it to make a logo. Let's get started. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve 18. So first I'm going to show you what the animation looks like. And then we're going to show you how to make it from scratch. All right, let's take a look. And you see how it came to a slow stop and reverse direction. And that that's a nice little tumbling box animation. So we can just scrub through that real quick. So you see how that Come to a nice slow stop and then reverses. And you'll notice how the lighting is changing. So it's showing you that there is a source of light that's shining on it. Okay, let's uh, let's show you the code for this real quick. So we'll drop into Fusion. Now you can see this this looks pretty complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Now I want to talk about a couple things real quick. Uh, the first thing I would suggest you do is uh, make a couple setting changes in your environment just to keep things neater and cleaner. So see how it's kind of jumping from spot to spot here. So what I've done is I've gone, I right clicked just out in the empty area there. And then I can go to options or I can go to arrange tools. So here I've got it set to grid is checked and options, we've got orthogonal pipes. Now to show you the difference, if I turn this to direct pipes, see how that kind of looks a little more confusing. And this is just a simple node structure. You start getting some real complexity and direct drawing of your pipes. <laughs> it can get really messy really fast. Despite the fact that it looks pretty complicated, it looks like there's lots of stuff here. It's pretty simple and it's pretty easy to build. So we're going to take you through it step at a time. Let's get started. So all I did here is I I right clicked over in my media pool and I created a, a new fusion composition, made it 10 seconds, named it something that made sense to me at the time. And then I dragged it out to the timeline and then we'll drop into fusion. Now I've already brought a few little things in here, just the graphics we're going to be working with. So I've got this box panels in here. So we're going to hit our little left view button here because we're going to need to be able to reference this to get everything looking right. Oh, I just realized my camera is tipping over. Let me fix it. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Boy, this is actually the third time I'm recording this tutorial. So it looks like it's fixed. We're a few minutes in and it's still recording. So hopefully the third time is the charm. So we've got our our box panels displayed up here. Now, the first thing we're going to need here is a 3D renderer. So we're just going to drag that from our toolbar. And we'll connect that with our media out. And we'll just click out an empty space, make sure nothing is selected. We're gonna hit our shift space bar and we're gonna type in cube. And we'll select our cube 3D. We'll add that. Now we'll connect that. And I'm just gonna pull it off back here a little bit. Now uh, make a note that this is orange right now and the other sides are going to be all different colors. So we'll just look at that real quick. If we do a transform, so I can come in here, we can spin it, see we've got different colors on, on all the sides. So we need to set all that to white. I'll show you real quick why we need to do that. Let's talk a little bit about the inputs on this particular node. So there's actually seven inputs one for each side and then an extra for something else. 
If any of you know, make sure to drop a comment below. I'd love to know. Okay, so we're going to take our front and instead of using the left hand mouse button to drag over the connection, we're gonna use the right mouse button. And the reason is, instead of having to figure out what all of these little inputs do by going and hovering over until it tells you, okay, that's back. And then you gotta try to remember what color, right? So all I do is I use the right mouse button, I drag it over to the middle. As soon as I let go, it pops up a menu. So now I can select front. And now you notice it's not only orange, but it's a little distorted. It's too wide. What we're going to do is over on the transform, we're going to unlock our XYZ. And now we can take our X and we can shrink it down a little bit. And we're going to do this until we get it the right aspect ratio. That looks pretty close. It doesn't have to be exact. So now we're going to go in here to material and we're going to change this orange to white. So we can just actually drag this dropper, drag it over here because we happen to have white. Uh, if you didn't, then you could just manually change it to white. This is just faster. So I'll just, uh, I'll change the rest and then I'll bring it back when I'm done. Now we've got the rest of them done. If we look at back, it's already white, so we don't have to change that one. Okay, so now we're just going to make our connection. So if we go back to our transform and we spin it around, we can see, you know, our other sides are all blank. We're just going to tip it to the side here a little bit. And we're going to connect our spine. So once again, right button drag, select left. Okay. So now this is going to be our Z depth. So we've got to shrink that down. Now it's hard to get this exactly proportional when you're looking at it on an angle like that. So we're just going to rotate this to 90 degrees. See, even though it looked right, it wasn't. So we'll, we'll continue to refine this. And when we get the shape just right, I think that's got it right about there. Okay, so then we can connect the rest of the sides. So we're gonna take our front and we'll drag another one out to the middle. And then that's gonna go on the back. There we go. And we're gonna take our spine and we're gonna attach that to the right. And then we've got our bottom that we'll attach to the bottom and our top to the top. Now it goes without saying that you don't actually have to have a separate top or bottom. You can do the same as we did for the spine in the front, or you can have a separate one for everything. So if you're doing a product box and you've got a big write up with details on the back of the box, then this is where you would put it. So now I should talk uh, for just a moment about how I made this picture. So I drew this in just a basic vector graphics editor. Uh, the one I used was called Pictographic. I did it on my MacBook Pro. Uh, I've got Inkscape on my Windows box here. I just, for stuff like this, I just find it's overly complicated, it takes too long. Pictographic, I, I drew this up in a matter of about five, six minutes. So all you do is Let's just shrink this down a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So I just started with a 1920 by 1080 pixel blank canvas. And then I started by drawing the spine. So I got it set the way I wanted it, the right height and everything. And then just with just the bare box, I duplicated it, drug it over, and then increased the size by, or sorry, I increased the width by three. And then I, I once again took the spine, duplicated it, turned it sideways, so it turned it 90 degrees, and then overlaid it on top of the, the front panel and adjusted the, the length of it until it matched the width of this panel. And then I duplicated it for the bottom. And then I added all the stuff on, all the text and the, the other little goodies. So you basically you just make it up the way you want it. Now other tutorials out there tell you to get the proper 3D look, you have to do a shading layer on top of this. But because we're assembling this in DaVinci and it's gonna look after all the lighting, don't do any of that. Just leave it plain, bright, 
like this. No shading layer over top, okay? And then all I did was I exported the whole thing as a PNG, and then each one of these sections with all the stuff that went with it got each exported as their own standalone graphic. <clears throat> and that's how we got all these individual pieces to put on here. All right, so now if we spin this around, you'll notice we've got no lighting effect on it at all. You know, it looks like a nice 3D box, but the lighting's not there, so it, it's not completely selling the effect. Now this, if this is all you're after, you can stop right here and you're good. But you know, you can put this together, you can take it into the color page, grab a still, export that still. And that's actually how I did my first box to get it on my website. If we we're gonna have lighting and shadows and all that kind of thing, then we need to turn that all on. We're gonna need to add a 3D merge because we're gonna have to add some lights. So that's done with the 3D merge. We're gonna grab this merge 3D and we're gonna drop that in. All I did was hold my shift key down, move it around until it turned blue and dropped it on. We'll just double check. Yeah, it's connected. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my renderer 3D, select that. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna enable lighting and enable shadows. On the merge 3D, we're gonna pass through our lights. Okay, now we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna take a spotlight. That's gonna be one of our lights. We need to grab another light. So we're gonna hit our shift space bar and we're gonna put in a directional light. So we just type in light, choose directional light. Now you could do ambient light, but I find directional light gives more, more of that directional effect you're after. Ambient light is just gonna light everything evenly. And that, we already kind of had that before we added any of this. So that would be kind of pointless in my view. So we're gonna add this directional light to the Merge 3D. And now we're gonna put this up in our left-hand viewer. And we're gonna pull this back a little bit. And we're gonna transform, use target. And then you can actually move the target so you can adjust where it's aiming at. But the advantage of that is as we move it, it stays pointing right at it. We're just gonna raise this up a little bit. It doesn't really matter how far away from the object it is. It's directional light. Think of it more like sunlight. You're not gonna get a lot of variation uh, by changing the distance, just like you wouldn't with sunlight but we can adjust that lighting in a different spot. So now if we, uh, if we go back to our cube and let's rotate this back to the front here and we'll just get a little bit of an angle like this. See how dark it's turning now on those sides, but we're still not getting kind of that 3D light source effect that we're after. I mean, we're getting there, but we need one more thing to sell it. So I'm actually gonna take the directional light. I'm gonna drop the intensity down. So we'll go to controls and we're gonna drop this intensity down a fair bit because we're gonna be adding another light to it. Okay, let's add our spotlight. Now we'll put it up in the viewer. Now, Select Spotlight, we'll go to Transform, use Target. Okay, so now, pull that back, pull it back a little ways. And we'll just adjust it so we get a bit of a uh, angle coming down at the box. Actually, probably going to want a little more than that. Eventually, when we need to see the top of the box, that's going to make a difference. Okay, so now we're going to go to our controls. And first thing we're going to do is reduce our cone angle. Okay. So we'll set it about like so. Now we're going to change our penumbra angle. So this is going to soften the darkening effect. Okay, we're gonna bring that in tighter. And then I'm gonna adjust our drop off. I'm gonna smooth things out a little bit more. 
we're good right about there. And we're going to change our own angle back out again. Yeah, yeah, something about like that, I think. Should look pretty good. So we'll go back to our cube and we'll we'll try rotating it, see what that looks like. Uh, I think we're getting too much of a vignette effect on there. So we'll go back to our spotlight. And let's try increasing our penumbra angle a little bit more. All right. So you're going to have to basically tweak and tune back and forth a little bit until you get this just right. Okay. So I'm thinking this looks a little bit better and the brightest light that we see as it rotates past our light source, that's called a specular effect. So that looks pretty good. On here, it's actually, I normally have to adjust the specular, but this is actually looking pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. However, I'm going to brighten our spotlight just a little bit. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to brighten our directional light a little bit. Spotlight's already max intensity. So we're just going to brighten the box a little bit, just subtly because it was going a little too dark, I think. All right, let's try this again. Yeah, I'm thinking that's looking a little better. Getting a nice drop off effect. We've got a nice specular for a glossy printed box. Now that said, I want to show you how to change the specular in case it isn't right, okay? So if we go to the material tab on our cube 3D, we're going to choose a face. So we're going to start with the front. I'm just going to double check, make sure I'm setting at zero for my Y rotation. Yep. I want to be absolutely sure I'm actually looking at the side. I think I am. And we're going to pop open specular. And then we can take and it's sitting at one right now. I'm not sure if I can increase it past that. Let's try 1.5. Yeah. So now you'll see if we go to the rotate. Now you can see it's a little bit brighter. Okay. So we'll go back to our material. So now if I crank this up to say 2.5 you'll see how it's kind of blowing it out now so now if we rotated it now you can see now we're getting closer to a look as if on that front as if you had it wrapped in cellophane and that's probably not actually the look you want but that's completely up to you but I'm going to go back to material change this back to one now you could actually change it down to where there's virtually no change at all as it rotates just something very subtle make it look like a distant light way off in the corner of the room or something so it's really you can you can play with it until you get it just the way you want it okay now you may be thinking that this box is looking a little small so when you actually have it on your timeline you can adjust the overall size of it there but we can do it here first and I wanted to show you something too. So let's take our transform and let's say we want to watch this box just slowly rotating, but not tumbling. So just rotating sideways, right? That's perfectly fine. We can make that happen, but you notice we're not seeing the top of the box. So we're not getting the full kind of 3D effect. So if I bring, if I tilt the box a little bit so you can see the top, right? Now watch what happens when I rotate it. 
See how it's not smoothly rotating, it's actually wobbling. And if you, that's what you want, great, you can use this. But that's probably not what you're after for this. And the way we fix that is we add a camera. Okay, so we're gonna reset these. And we're gonna drag in a 3D camera, or sorry, camera 3D. All right, so now our screen suddenly went black, but that's because the camera lens is basically touching our product box. So we're gonna pull this back until we get the box about the size that we want. That should be pretty good there. Now we're gonna to go to transform. We're gonna click on use target. Okay, go back to our controls. So now we can move this camera a little bit. So we're gonna move it. We can move it off to the left like this and then raise it up. And that's typically what I do for these types of things. Now you can leave this camera lined up straight in front and just raise it straight up to see the box top. And that gives you an easier starting point for your animation. So if you were trying to loop it over and over, then you would kind of need to worry about that. But I've got another alternative that is going to be better, at least I think. And that's what you saw where the example I showed you, it came to a stop and then reverse direction. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And I think that works much better than just continuing the rotation over and over. Unless you're doing like a 3D logo uh, on a video, so you've got like a watermark of a little rotating 3D logo, then you want it to just continue. But uh, if you stick to the end, I'm gonna show you a little bonus of how to do an actual spinning logo. It's it's really quite simple. Okay, so once we got our, our camera 3D set the way we want it, let's go back to our cube 3D. And now if we rotate it, it's no longer wobbling. And it's rotating the way that would make sense to a person, right? All right. So now we kind of got everything the way we want it. So let's reset. And we're gonna go back, pull our position back to frame zero. Okay, so this remember this is 10 seconds at 30 frames per second. So 300 frames. And we're not going to animate this at the beginning and the end. We're going to animate this at the beginning and the middle. So we're going, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a keyframe on my Y rotation. We're going to worry about the tumbling later. Okay, and then we'll bring our position to... 149 because that's actually the halfway point and we're going to set another keyframe now i'm going to replace this number with 360. all right so if we go back to the beginning now you'll see we've got our rotation now it's going to play faster than this it's still rendering it as it's playing. So it's going to speed up and smooth out. So now you notice it stops moving at the middle, which is what we want. We'll fix that in a minute. Okay, now it's done rendering. As you can see, it's rotating nice and smooth until of course it gets to the middle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back on that spot. We're going to go up here and we're going to open our spline editor. And I'm going to check the box for Y rotation. And then we've got a little button here, and this is zoom to fit. So all the uh, keyframes that are within that particular Y rotation, it'll zoom them all in. And in this case, there's only two. So we're gonna select both of them like that, draw a box around, and we're gonna smooth it out. So now that gives us a smoother animation. It's gonna start slow, go a little faster in the middle and slow back down at the end. And that's how we get that slowing right down, coming to a stop and reversing. And we get the reversing with this button right here. It's called ping pong. And that's what's going to basically bounce it back and forth. 
and it's just a lot easier to deal with a smooth, cohesive, seamless animation when you use a ping pong as opposed to looping it. Okay, so let's get rid of the spline editor. Now we can go back to the beginning and we can play it again. Okay, now you can see it's done its rendering. It's going nice and smooth, comes to a nice stop, reverses direction. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. If this is all you want, you're done. Now, if you're finding that, oh, it's going too fast or it's going too slow, now you're thinking, oh, now I'm gonna have to change the animation in Fusion to fix it. Well, you, you don't, I'm gonna show you another way. Much easier. Okay, so we'll, we'll go back to the beginning. Now we're gonna add a keyframe for our X rotation. And we'll go back to frame 149, add another frame. And now we're gonna change this number to 720. Okay, we'll go back to the beginning. I'll render it out and then play it for you. All right, it's done rendering. Now you can see it's got the tumble going, but the tumble's gonna stop right there and it'll carry on rotating the other way. All right, so now we're gonna fix that. So we're gonna go back to our frame 149. We'll open our spline editor. This time we're gonna turn off the check box for Y rotation. We don't wanna accidentally make any changes there. And once again, we'll hit our zoom to fit button here. We're gonna select all of our keyframes. We're gonna smooth it. And then we're gonna ping pong it. All right, we can close that. Now I'll render it again. Okay, you can see it's rendered. It's now doing the tumble thing. You can see it's moving pretty fast. Like I said, I'm gonna show you how to slow that down. All right, so we'll just stop that. Set it back to the beginning. Now, I'm gonna show you the little bonus for if you wanna do a rotating logo. Let's just separate these for a moment. And we'll take our, our little logo file here. And all I did to rename it was hit the F2. And that's how I renamed all these other ones to match the pictures. What I did is I brought them in one at a time and named them that way, no confusion. Okay, so now we're gonna take our logo and we're gonna attach it using our right mouse drag. We'll attach it to the front. And now we're also gonna attach it to the back. But I'm gonna show you that there's a problem with that. Okay. So now if we go back to our cube 3D, we're sitting right on frame zero, so any changes we make here, as long as we put them back, won't affect the animation that we built. So I'm just gonna rotate this. First of all, you can, it's actually not perfectly proportional. So we've got a, normally we would fix that, but I don't wanna mess, mess with it. So I'm just gonna leave it. The thing I wanted to show you is if we rotate to the back, you see how on both sides, we've got the, the, the uplifted corner of the smile is on the right hand side. So when you flip it over, it should actually now be on the left. So people will watch this and they'll know something's not quite right, but not understand what's wrong. So you get to kind of get that uncanny valley effect. What we're gonna do to fix that is we're gonna grab a transform node. We're gonna bring that in. And I'm going to disconnect one of these. Oh, it looks like I disconnected the wrong one. Okay, so I'm gonna drag one back to the front. And then I'm gonna drag another. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a transform and I'm just gonna drag it down here, hover over the line with it until you see it change color. Let go. So now it's in there. All right, so we're going to disconnect this one because it's going to the wrong one. So now we'll drag another one out from logo here for our front. Oops, try that again. <laughs> All right, so now we'll take from our transform and we'll drag this and attach it to the back. All right, so now if I go back to my cube 3D, 
and we'll rotate it. And you'll see it's still facing the wrong direction. So we're going to go into transform and we're going to hit the flip horizontal. And there we go. So now when you rotate the logo, it's truly looking like you're seeing the back side of it. Now you notice that we've got our sides are white and you don't want that. You want them to match your the main field color of your logo. So we go back to material. We'll pick our left side here, and grab our eyedropper tool and sample our color from the logo. And then you just repeat that for all the other sides. So top, bottom, left, right. And then you got your spinning logo and same animation can apply to it. So we're going to change this back. So I undid everything and we've got it back the way it was. Now we're going to go out to the edit page. And you can see we've got our animation working. So I'm just going to let the smart render finish. All right, it's done uh, smart rendering here. So we'll go ahead and play it. So you can you can see like when we're on the fusion page, it's doing this pretty fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this and we're going to select new compound clip. Name it whatever you want. Okay, so now because it's now a compound clip, we can go in and change our clip speed. So I can change this to say 50%. And then because you've slowed it down, it's now longer, so we can lengthen it out. We'll lengthen out the generator and we'll just let that smart render out and we'll play it again. It's done smart rendering. Let's take a look. So now you can see it's traveling a lot slower and smoother. And I'm not sure why it stuttered there for a second. It won't when you render it, believe me, it'll be fine. Just occasionally you might have a background, some background operation start up in Windows that can cause a little stutter like that when you're just doing normal playback. Nothing to worry about, it'll render out fine. So a lot easier than you thought, isn't it? <laughs> well, if you enjoyed our content, please drop us a like. Make sure to subscribe if you find value for watching our content in the future. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And right at the end here, YouTube's going to show you, probably over here, a couple of videos that they, uh, that they think you're going to like that are related to what you're watching here. So thanks for hanging out with us today. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.